live are we here no. we are no we're not live <laughs> yes we should be live stream oh stream. nice actually do me a favor if you go to the youtube you should be able to see our thumbnail going from being a live show to uh, sorry from being a thumbnail to the live show yes i see you okay should be fine yeah. all right good enough um mate what's going on everything okay Oh yes, uh, everything good. Good morning. I wake up uh, really early in this Saturday, <laughs> but uh, I'm uh, really happy to be here hosted on your channel. It's a pleasure to be here <laughs> and uh, I hope we can have a nice talk in the next minutes. It's nice that there are already people watching. Daniela, hi Daniela, how are you? Andre is also coming from, I think he's now in France. Okay guys, so just to give you a little bit of a uh, quick roundup what it's going to happen today, I'm here with beautiful person, great designer, Matteo Rossi, which is a, um, I don't want to say that you're a car designer because I don't think that you actually design cars. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not actually uh, a designer in, intended in the way like a, a product designer or a car designer is i'm more uh, like uh, um, a render artist so i visualize things like cars uh, products i do advertising uh, visualization as well i did uh, even architectural visualization in the past years but uh, I left the ArcVis market because, uh, you know, well, it's uh, an overcrowded world. Uh, there is a lot of competition. Clients are usually, you know, trying to cheap your work. It's uh, it's a wild world. <laughs> so I prefer to to focus myself and my business on product visualization, animations, and advertising. And uh, yes, of course, even cars. <clears throat> I got to say that uh, I do cars mainly for a passion. Yes. Uh, but uh, lately I start to do even some small commercial works, uh, like uh, I did uh, small modeling, uh, retopology stuff for Volkswagen and Fiat uh, commercial in the last month. I'm actually going uh, to show some of your work to people yeah, sure. so that they can have an idea. I'm looking at my screen, so you can continue talking. It's just that uh, people will be seeing your images. Yeah. And so, um, okay. Well, one of the reasons why I wanted to have this conversation with you, it's for the things that you just mentioned, that, you know, you did a little bit of architectural visualization, and then you moved in that direction, and then your passion somehow brought you to do a work that you might be enjoying a little bit more, which is working in the field of automotive. Can you yeah, tell me a little bit more about that side of your story? Yes, uh, well, um, starting from the past, uh, I really enjoyed uh, uh, motorsport since I was uh, a little kid. I started watching uh, like uh, MotoGP races and uh, <clears throat> and Formula One races in the early 2000, uh, thanks to people like uh, Valentino Rossi and Michael Schumacher. And uh, so my, my passion for cars and motorcycles developed uh, since I was uh, seven, six years old. I started uh, reading uh, magazines like, uh, you know, the Italian uh, Quattro Ruote mm. and uh, stuff like that, uh, tuning magazines. Uh, I started playing video games like uh, Gran Turismo, Need for Speed. Uh, so my love for the automotive world uh, is, uh, is pretty part of uh, myself since I was young. Uh, so I, I thought when I was like um, 22, three, four years ago, I thought to start rendering stuff uh, like cars and motorcycles for fun. Uh, I still was studying, uh, uh, so I was not uh, sure about my, my focus on the career 
like uh, yeah i want to be a 3d artist but uh, what am i gonna do i still didn't know uh but uh yeah there was a moment uh, during uh, which i i thought uh, okay i really love uh, this uh, stuff i don't want to do it just for uh, an hobby i want to make it uh, a profession so my main goal at the moment for the future years is to to start working with uh, big companies uh, that manufactures cars or motorcycles um, i was really close to to start a collaboration with the motorcycle company in the last month but uh, the situation now is slowing down because of uh, of this virus that uh, is slowing down everything in the world so let's see what happens in the following month yeah. uh, i hope to start this collaboration because it's gonna be it will be really really cool um moreover i gotta say that uh, i don't earn uh, a lot of money from the automotive renders at the moment yes. as i told you before uh, i just did a, a couple of commercial works so uh it's fine at the moment i don't complain too much uh, because i got my earnings from from other stuff but uh, yeah my target is to leave uh, let's say 70 75 percent uh, get uh, the income from the automotive uh, uh, field okay i get it um first of all let me just say hi to the other people that are uh, tuning in because at the moment there is i don't know where is <coughs> the number how many people are watching this but anyway I want to say hi to Ophir, I guess Luca Francesco, thanks a lot for tuning in. Filippo, I think it's your birthday today, so happy birthday, Filippo. Uh, it's very nice that you guys got up so early to listen to our chat. So, uh, Matteo, obviously I have a couple of questions for you. First of all, um, you know, the fact that you're Italian at the moment you live... In which region do you live? I live in uh, Lombardy. Which that is, is the actually... epicenter... Exactly, exactly. Um, the town in which I live, it's 20 kilometers from uh, Milan. And uh, it was uh, really close even to the first uh, uh, lockdown zone uh, that we have. Uh, we had uh, here uh, like uh, almost one month ago. Uh, yeah, the situation here is really bad, especially for hospitals, because uh, there are so many infected people. Uh, so many old people that are suffering and dying. So yeah, the situation is really, really hard. I, to... uh, you know, I I really don't want <coughs> to start a conversation about the corona, but at the same time, I talk to my friends overseas, America and uh, you know Australia, and I have the feeling a little bit that a lot of people are still underestimating the yes. the, the magnitude of the problem, and so you know. <coughs> We're repeating ourselves, unfortunately, but it's, I guess it's uh, our duty as humans to make people understand that this is not something that you should be fucking around with. It's a serious problem. That's the yes, reason yes. why everybody is closed inside. Yeah, the, the problem is that uh, even now, a lot of people, especially in Italy, un are uh, underestimating this issue that is... Uh, an actual problem it's it's like being in a war yeah you know um, we must uh, of course suffer and sacrifice ourselves in these uh, weeks but uh, it's definitely needed for overcome this uh, this damn problem Matteo behind you there is a poster of Pagani Zonda which is yes. autographed can you tell me the story <clears throat> of that autograph uh, right um, this uh, render was done uh, in april 2019 um, i read on facebook about uh, an event that was taking place in milan uh, it was a book presentation 
uh, a, a book about Pagani history and cars. And um, Horatio Pagani would have been hosted in this event. Uh, so Horatio himself uh, would have presented his books about his uh, beautiful pieces of art. Mm. Um, initially, I thought uh, I read about the event like two days before uh, the event in itself. So initially I thought, oh, all right, I'm going to attend this event. I'm going to buy the book. Uh, but uh, I would like to do something special. I had only two days. So in the morning, I started working on uh, on this car. I already had a model. I did a couple of detailing on like a headlight, uh, mirrors, interiors and stuff. I set up a really quick uh, studio lighting, uh, did the render and printed it uh, the, the next day. So in the morning I printed uh, the render and uh, in the afternoon I was uh, in Milan uh, attending <laughs> the event. Uh, when, uh, when I showed uh, Mr. Pagani the, the render car, he said, uh, oh, this is uh, really nice, really nice. I think uh, he just uh, wanted to be kind uh, for, to me for my, for my job. Uh, but, uh, well, I'm not uh, really proud of the image itself because uh, it's really cheap looking, let's say, because uh, I had no time to work on it. But uh, I'm really proud to have it uh, autographed by, by Mr. Pagani, yes, of course. Uh, I hope to to have the possibility to to make him sing another render this time way better than this one. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Pagani is based in in Italy, right? I mean, <clears throat> the... yes, Pagani is in uh, the so-called uh, Motor Valley in uh, Emilia Romagna, uh, like uh, in the radius of forty kilometers. There are Ferrari, Pagani, Lamborghini, Ducati. Yes. So, really nice place to be. It's have like you ever the Silicon thought Silicon Valley of motors? Yes. Have you ever thought of moving down there to kind of like get closer to possible clients? I, yeah, I think uh, it will be great. Uh, it's not even too far from uh, where I live. Like uh, going to Pagani factory from my hometown is not even two hours of car. So it's pretty close. Uh, yeah, it will be it will be really cool to to have like a, a job for these uh, these uh, automotive firms. Yeah, will be great. First of all, let I, me say... I definitely need to to get some uh, nice uh, contact uh, inside these uh, these uh, these brands because uh, you know. Uh, it's the same for everything, but uh, this is a really um, closed world. Like you need to know the right people yes, to get in course. touch with. And uh, yes, then everything gets easier. However, I don't think you would have such big issues getting in there in, based on the quality of the work that you produce. I really don't think so. But, you know, I appreciate the fact that you're so humble about what you do and I I see it you know you're like you respect the process you're not an automotive designer you do this stuff for passion and I really <coughs> appreciate the fact that you know you're putting yourself where you belong however I do think that you have the skills to tackle the market yeah. later on at a later point I want to say Thanks to all the other people that are tuning in. Hi, Elisa, Irma, Giacomo, Carlos. Uh, I guess that a lot of your friends are watching the video. <laughs> oh, yeah, I spammed a lot yesterday <laughs> between my friends. I'm very glad to give you an opportunity to talk about, uh, you know, your your art and your work, because I really think that you deserve it. Um, and, you know, you. as an Italian, I'm very proud to see... Um, people in Italy being able to do such good work because when I first left in the beginning of the year 2000, um, you know, this was one of the things that we were complaining about in Italy, that we had no resources, no good clients, and that the market did not demand 
high quality work. But these things are changing also in Italy, right? I mean, clients are becoming um, more needy. Yes, let's say that uh, uh, big clients are still uh, really hard to manage, to relate with. Uh, meanwhile, uh, smaller companies are always super good to work with. Like my best clients are all small companies, 90% uh, Italian companies. <clears throat> they, they are not afraid of uh, paying a price for, uh, for a job. Uh, so yeah, I think the situation is getting a little better. Uh, but uh, of course, the archivist field is always uh, <laughs> really hard to manage. We have way that's too why, many that's people. That's why doing I left uh, back in the in the days. Uh, but yeah, all the world is a country, so this is a, a common issue. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let me let me ask you a little <coughs> bit about your workflow. Um, you're obviously a Cinema 4D user. Um, that's how we got to know each other in the in the first place, of course, over the internet. Why did you make the decision to go for cinema? And you know, I want you, I want the people from home to understand that I'm not being paid by Maxon. <laughs> so you know, whatever good or bad that is going to come out of this conversation, I am not a sponsored uh, Maxon person. See, well, um, I came in touch first with Cinema 4D, like in 2010, I think. I still was uh, at the high school um, and uh, I was doing, uh, I was a graffiti writer, you know, spray uh -huh. painting okay. stuff. <clears throat> and do you I still wanted... do that? Uh, no, I stopped in 2012. Okay. Yeah, then focus only on 3D. <laughs> well, I, I was doing graffiti and um, I wanted to push it uh, to the limit doing uh, this stuff in 3D. So the first the softwares I found on the internet were uh, Blender and Cinema 4D. Uh, Blender was actually free, so I tried it for a couple of weeks after like uh, a month. I wasn't even able to create a cube. Uh, <laughs> the software, the software was uh, so damn hard to learn. So I left it, and uh, I started with Cinema 4D, doing uh, like you know this uh, uh, crappy stuff like uh, intros, uh, text animation, uh, yes. this stuff, and I did even a couple of uh, 3D graffiti. So. From this, uh, I I just started on cinema and uh, go on with it. Uh, I tried even uh, other three D packages during the years, like three uh, D X Max, uh -huh. but uh, I left it as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, cinema is uh, is my first love, and uh, I, I'm still in love with it. Is uh, so good. Uh, yeah, stop it because uh, I don't want to sponsor Maxon now. Yeah. <laughs> Maxon, <laughs> no, if a, you're listening, a, send... It's a great software. Send gifts. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait for it. Look at this. Maxon Oh, pen. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also have a couple of them laying around. But, you know, like, um, you know, I organize events and I also go and um, attend other events. And I have to say, I I love the fact that Maxon, this is one of the <coughs> reasons why um, I'm still close to the software. They share the sense of community that many other artists share. They really get it. As of, yeah. like, if you go to, there are other companies working in the field, which, you know, their politics is just to get on stage and shovel products down people's throats uh, yeah, yeah. and this i don't like maxim on the other end they they're really cool people they really understand what people want to see and you know when i go to events even if it's a sponsored lecture from maxim they always use artists they never talk about the product they always talk about the uh, the project and then what happened is that people eventually will ask about the product right because that's a clever way to do it. And so 
one of the things that I want to ask you about the product or how you do your work um, using this product is what are some of the techniques that you use in order to achieve that level of photorealism? And also, like, what are things that you consider when framing shots and when taking digital pic uh, virtual pictures of your models? Too many so, questions. <laughs> no, no, it's fine, it's fine. Well, um, about uh, photorealism, I gotta say that uh, another help comes from uh, Corona Render, that it's uh, a great render engine. It's uh, so awesome, the quality you can uh, reach uh, without getting mad with uh, settings, uh, tests and stuff. Uh, you can reach a really high level, uh, just uh, tuning uh, and tweaking uh, a couple of, thi of uh, things. Um, I think, of course, the, the fact of uh, rendering a more realistic uh, thing uh, is based on the photographic knowledge and uh, how lights behave. Uh, that was uh, a problem I, I had in the past uh, because I didn't knew how lights work correctly, how um, like uh, photographic uh, composition uh, work, how um, like focal length can change your way of uh, looking at uh, something like uh, when you portrait a, peop um, a person face it's uh, really important to get a correct focal length and not to make uh, uh, him look uh, too fat uh, yeah. or too skinny so all the photographic knowledge is the base of, uh, of rendering as well uh then uh, the technical part of uh, knowing software's parameters is just uh, a small thing uh, like when i look at uh, images i did uh, like two or three years ago i think uh, technically speaking these images are really good uh, materials are set up well and stuff but uh, the photographic part uh, is really bad uh that's the reason why i focused uh, a lot uh, in the last uh, year especially on um, studying uh, composition stuff uh, watching a lot of movies uh, uh, and uh, trying to understand uh, how scenes are shoot how lights are used how colors can change the feeling of something you are looking at uh, so yeah i think that uh, is more uh, the the actual photographic approach you should have while shooting a real thing you should have it of course even in 3d mm -hmm. um, then of course uh, if you don't know how to create a car paint material or carbon fiber material you can go anywhere so <laughs> you need the the technical part as well and the right texture it's a nightmare to find a good texture uh, for particular stuff like uh, carbon fiber or uh, alcantara that is like a, a suede fabric used yeah. in car interiors let me let me ask you okay so <coughs> how did you start de develop your photographic skills did you start to pay attention to the work of photographers how did you move your first steps in that direction well i am um... I have the, the passion even of uh, photography, actually. So I started uh, doing more and more photos in the last years, like during uh, trips, during uh, car events, of course. And uh, so, yes, of course, shooting more photos, it's uh, the you make experience on the field. You learn from uh, your mistakes. And of course, having a, a look to to great uh, photographers. It's um, a great way to get inspired, uh, even to copy, let's say that, because uh, I don't think copy is a sin. Uh, it's fine to copy even painters, like in the Renaissance, uh, copied from their masters. So it's fine. I hope that uh, some artists uh, in the future 
will copy from my work because they will find it uh, inspiring for them. Uh, so yeah, um, a lot of uh, lot of refer. I have um, a folder in my PC uh, that is all about photographic references about uh, cars, uh, architecture, landscape, photography, paintings. It's like uh, I think more than one thousand pictures. Sometimes I have uh, a look uh, at those pictures and I try to to understand uh, what's going on. Maybe I look at the picture even uh, <laughs> 12, uh, 14 times uh, and each time I can find something that uh, makes me learn uh, new stuff. Yes. There are a lot of questions coming in. Um... Francesco is asking something that we have already covered in the very beginning. So how did you start? Um, did you take any tutorials? Did you go to a school to do that? We can answer this also later if it's... Uh, yeah, even uh, even now if, okay. uh, if you want. Yeah, okay, yeah, go um, for it. Well, about uh, uh, how I learned all the stuff, uh, um, talking about the 3D, of course. Uh, I gotta say that uh, 85 80, 85% of the stuff is uh, self taught, like watching uh, tutorials on uh, YouTube. Uh, in the beginning, uh, a great, great um, source uh, of uh, learning was uh, Grayscale Gorilla, that uh, I think uh, it's uh, like uh, a godsend for all cinema for the artists. And um, yeah, of shout course, out to uh, Nick! <laughs> <laughs> yeah nick you are uh you are a god gift <laughs> and uh yes uh, a lot of tutorials on the on the on the internet and then i attended uh, a master class about uh, um, vra and cinema 4d in late uh, 2016 it, it was um a three months month master class uh, mainly focused on uh, architectural visualization, but uh, my workshop project was not about uh, architecture. <laughs> can you can you tell us who this masterclass was with? Yes, uh, it was by Angelo Ferretti. Um, Another in god in the field of uh, cinema. And, uh... Yeah, uh, the ninety percent of stuff uh, of technical stuff I learned was uh, thanks to his uh, blog. Uh, everything I learned about uh, VRA for Cinema 4D is uh, thanks to Angelo. And uh, yes, of course, uh, with him, I learned even a lot of, thi of uh, things about uh, like uh, composition, colors, art direction as well. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, mainly self-taught and even this masterclass was uh, really important for me, I think that uh, it marks the turnaround between my student career and then my professional career. I see. I attended even, uh, I studied graphic design at the university, but uh, that was not uh, really focused on 3D, but uh, on uh, more traditional graphics, like, uh, you know, branding, uh, creation and stuff like that. So yes, it's, it's of course uh, an important uh, experience, but uh, not that much for uh, 3D. I get it. Now, let me just uh, uh, say something, add something to what you said before about copying other artists. Uh, I also think it's a very great practice. The only thing is that we need to understand where we draw the line in terms of like copywriting and appropriating um, intellectual property right because yeah. copying if it's done for the purpose of learning and exploring and understanding it's an incredible tool for you to speed up and learn more but of course from the practical uh, and practice so to say side of things and professional side of things it's something that you cannot really do or propose to clients because then you're ripping other artists off yeah. now the question is have you ever had any <coughs> work of yours being ripped off and being sold as uh not yours well uh i did actually um 
couple of images I did uh, about uh, with the featuring cars were used in uh, YouTube uh, music videos, um, like I think uh, five or six times. Um, I asked the YouTube to remove these videos. Uh, they did. Uh, some of the guys that uh, uploaded uh, these videos uh, uh, wrote to me an email asking uh, uh, to to retire my complaint. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did, uh, guys, you you're using uh, an image. I did. Uh, you have no permission of putting it uh, into into your video, so I can't do that. They kindly asked the, to 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 use my picture so uh, they put my my social media stuff uh, in the in their descriptions so i was totally fine i mean these images are done just for fun so if they asked they uh, asked me for uh, to to use uh, those images uh, it wouldn't have be a problem for me yeah. to to give the the permission uh, so yeah, it's fine. But uh, when you search, uh, uh, for, you do any image search on Google, and you find tons of videos with <laughs> with your images, you you get a bit angry because uh, I I mean uh, I found even a lot of videos featuring images from uh, other artists I know. I I let them knew. Uh, but uh, they told me, yeah, it's fine. It's like happening a uh, hundred times yeah. uh, in a year. I don't even complain more. So yeah, N nothing crazy. Yeah, nothing crazy. Regular stuff. I, I think that it's uh, at a certain point, it also affects your um, your head if you have to start chasing everybody who rips off your work. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm not saying that people should rip off your work, but you know, there there have been cases in which uh, a few years ago, I remember a friend of mine did a visualization animation work, and this was completely stolen and played during a Huawei event in China. And yeah, they yeah. completely disregarded this. They did not care. And bear in mind that this work, this is work that uh, if a company commissions it, it's work that it's worth maybe 100k. So, you know, it's it's a lot of money that the artist yeah, it, is not uh, getting paid. It's a great loss, of course. I think even uh, uh, Peter Tarka, that is uh, yes. uh, a great uh, d designer, concept artist, uh, uh, had uh, um, one of his works stolen by uh, Xiaomi, I think. Okay. Uh, that was uh, another legal problem he had, uh, so... Yeah, that, that stuff is really bad for our industry, uh, especially news, uh, uh, like newspapers, uh, TV news, uh, stores, pictures, photographies. Uh, they don't even credit uh, authors. Source, yeah. So yeah, that, that, that's a, a big problem, of course. Now, one thing that I wanted to, to ask you about your uh, work when it comes to the, uh, the cars. And let me just pull a couple of uh, images up so that people understand what we're talking about. In many cases, hold on, let me find a good image. Um, the setting and the architecture that surrounds the image seems to be playing a very good role in, uh, in framing also the image and drawing the attention of the viewer in a specific direction. How much did your knowledge for architecture visualization help you in making the transition towards uh, automotive? Yeah, that's actually um, my art, uh, composition about architecture plays a key role in this because uh, architectural visualization is uh, all about uh, composition in terms of photography. Uh, so, yeah, I think that uh, all my knowledge is really important for this. I really struggle to find uh, uh, the good positioning of uh, stuff that it's inside a frame of an image, like looking at uh, thirds, uh, golden ratio, all this stuff. Uh, I always get crazy about this 
things, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I usually gave up uh, when something uh, it's not uh, it's not going like uh, I would like it to do. Uh, but yeah, it's really really important uh, even for cars because um, cars are a great piece of design usually. Yes. So it's it's really important to showcase details. Uh, um the, the bodywork uh, in their uh, in all their shapes and uh, composition knowledge it's uh, really helpful uh, there yeah i agree actually lately i started to play a little bit around with a couple of cars because you know before i had the excuse that i did not have the time to do modeling and stuff and now instead i do and so i started yeah. to to play around and that's the beautiful thing about cars. Cars can be photographed very much as uh, facial portraits. There are yeah. so many things and so many details that are just so beautiful that if you find the right frame, just the car alone is so beautiful to look at. Did you get a chance to look at the model of the uh, Stratos that I made? Are you going to take part uh, in yes. the... I, I did uh, have a look at the model, but... Uh, it's not a I... great model. I'm not... <laughs> I'm not... I put my <laughs> yeah, well, hands forward. <laughs> yeah, it just... Uh, well, it's difficult to model a car like this yes. because uh, there are not many references. Yes. Uh, the best of things will be to to have a look at it uh, in real life, of yes. course. Uh, well, I'm not uh, entering the competition. I hate competition. God damn it! <laughs> 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 well, I was a little busy in the last days, so I had no time to, you know, to to study well uh, uh, an image uh, because I don't want to create a simple studio shot for stuff like that. Uh, it needs more study, more art direction. Uh, so it will be great to have a couple of days uh, to to do this stuff. But yeah, I was a little busy. I hope you. You can create uh, another challenge in I the will. following weeks. <laughs> I will take part as well. <laughs> as, a, as of now, I don't really have uh, another automotive challenge. I'm working on another challenge. I hope that my 3D model will be ready by Monday. Um, to be honest with you, because I've started to make all these videos and all these interviews, I, I took a very old model that I had somewhere. Actually, somebody had to... It was so old that I needed somebody with R17 to open it and <laughs> yeah, save yeah. it so that I could... Uh... It was earlier than uh, 11.5, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I have this uh, issue as well sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, it's, uh, it's going to happen on Monday. I'm going to make a live stream where I'm going to render the model live so that people can see it. And then we'll see you know, what's going to happen. The goal is, with the time, to attract enough sponsorships so that we can raise the money prize that I give to the artists that win the competition. It's one way to keep people motivated during these times, right? Because you're lucky, yes. you have a little bit of work at the moment, so, you know, stick to it. But there are a lot of people that either lost their jobs or, you know, projects are on yeah, hold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a shame. Yeah, shitty times, man, shitty times. But anyway, <laughs> let me ask you, if you were to give a couple of tips to those who are thinking to walk your steps the way that you have um, built your talent and your uh, success in a way uh, in what you're doing today, what would you recommend to these guys? Well, I recommend to study a lot uh look at uh, every single image you like analyze it uh, in all its details and try to steal uh, the best things uh, you can find i mean um i don't even feel like uh, i can give tips because i still feel like i have uh, a ton of stuff to learn uh, but yeah, the, the only thing I can recommend is to, if you have uh, a passion for something, uh, just uh, follow it uh, 
a hundred percent stay motivated concentrated focused every single day don't waste your time on stupid stuff and just uh, follow your passion and your dreams this is the only thing that uh, can make uh, can make you feel good with yourself and that can make you achieve your goals i have one more question before we're going to stop the streaming and this is a question that a couple of people have asked me in the last days and so i thought it might be interesting to ask the same question <coughs> to the people that i interview if you were to recommend a tv show or a documentary that you have been watching during the quarantine that you thought yeah. was inspiring what would you what what would this documentary or tv show or tv series uh would be so um gotta say that uh, i'm not a tv show guy i don't watch any tv shows i i watch a lot of movies um i watched a couple in the last days and uh, i was uh, really impressed by 1970 uh, that uh, is uh, the war movie, movie. about uh, yes ex exactly yes. it's a world war one movie it's uh, i don't know how to translate it in english but it's like uh, a single camera shot okay uh, i don't know the correct uh, yeah it's translation. a one take one take yeah uh, it's it's a fake one take because there are a lot of cuts but uh, uh, it looks like uh, it's a one take and uh, it's uh, so good i think this is a, a masterpiece in terms of uh, photography script uh, it's really really good if you have the chance guys uh, uh, have a look at it because it's a really nice movie not now, about cars but uh, you, you know it's it's, it's uh, it's art. Uh, it's okay. It's like, uh, exactly. Inspiration comes from everywhere. Exactly. But anyway, Fabio Bertozzi, which is a guy that I really don't know. <laughs> I know him, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I know him too. He's asking, <laughs> if you're using the anti-bunning... <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is an internal joke. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> By the way, I, I use the anti-bunning. It's uh, definitely... Uh, crucial for my work. <laughs> You'll have to explain us later what that means. <laughs> yeah, sure. Matteo, uh, I just want to thank you for taking the time. This was a really fun conversation. I really thank appreciate you, you giving us the, the your time. I hope that people will come and see you and uh, join on your uh, uh, social media, your Instagram. You're very active. You post a lot of work. Uh, a lot of your friends are saying hi. Maybe later you have to go an answer to the the comments in the chat i'm yeah, going sure. to stop the streaming don't go anywhere so that i can say thank you one more time thanks a lot for taking the time guys from home thanks a lot for watching this was a lot of fun matteo thanks a lot thank you fabio bye guys <laughs> this was very good man <laughs>